it's not so much a question, it's just a thank you, Francis, thank you for the book, but also thank you for the articles that you've done in the Guardian over that period. We've had a, we've had a real struggle of getting the message out about what the impact of the last nine years of austerity had. And to be honest, you've been one of those bright lights that we've relied upon to get the information out there. And when we set up DPAC, uh, there are a number of people who originally set up DPAC are no longer with us because of the austerity measures, some of them took, took their own lives as well. And I think the more we share the examples of what's gone on and what these Tory, well, the language I should be <laughs> what they've done to us over the last year, nine years is important. I'll just give one further example. Two weeks ago, I sat for an hour and a half, um, no, two hours, actually, with uh, 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 the saint called Helen Logan who runs my office, and we were at a, a social care assessment with the, the young woman who looks after her mum, and her mum lay beside us in, the, in a, what is effectively a hospital bed, in the front room. And this young woman has been caring for her mother for the last few years, we've been trying to support her. We went through the assessment, and there was an assessment by a nurse and a, a social worker, and they were wonderful. They were what they did everything they possibly could, but they constrained by the system. I just give one example. Is if you if you score high um, on so if you score low on cognition, that's one criteria. You automatically score low on emotional distress. You can't be emotionally distressed if you haven't got the cognition. So if it's the other way round, if you have emotional distress, you score low, high on cognition, and on that basis you don't qualify. And it's that sort of entrapment of the system itself that's taken place, whereby you literally get access to support, it's become, well, it isn't just a postcode lot, it's worse than that, because there are no postcodes really where you get access to support on the basis of need anymore, it's on the basis of a very strict rationing that has become increasingly brutal. And what your book does, uh, and I'm so grateful for it, and I said it should shape the foundations of our society, it exposes the brutality that's been inflicted upon us over the last nine years. Now, Brexit, I know, is an important issue. Of course it is. It's one of the most significant issues we face. But I think Brexit's been used, actually, in the political debate to prevent the discussion of all the other issues that we need to confront. And it's all well and good, Doris Johnson comes along spraying money here, there, and everywhere on pet projects and other issues as well. But it's interesting, in all the discussion so far, he's mentioned nothing about Social Security, and he's not mentioned nothing about disabled people in any of the announcements or discussions that he's had. And I think that reflects, exactly as Adisa has said, that reflects their priorities and the direction in which they're travelling. And I think the good thing about your book, it puts the issue back on the agenda, it gives us another uh, piece of ammunition that we can use to DPAC and elsewhere in campaigning, but also actually in the development of policies. And you've heard from, uh, as has been said, the development of policies that we need to have. And it isn't, it isn't about lifting people out of poverty or protecting people from poverty. It's about giving people and allowing people to determine that they themselves have a decent quality of life. And, and I think the, the last sentence of your book is the one that I seized upon in the various things I've been saying. I just said, this is it. The rallying cry for our times is clear. How things are is not how they need to be. And I think that's what we should do, trying to get across to people more and more. On the basis of the work that you've done, both in your book and your articles, it doesn't have to be like this. And our job now is to make sure it isn't. And if only in, in memory of a lot of our colleagues that we've lost over this last time. So thanks for what you've done.